it going everyone and welcome back to another Me Out of Monday. Today we are going to be working on Molly yet again. It continues. We got two pretty easy things to install today. A radiator cooling panel and an oil catch can. Both of those things are from Track Dog Racing. Track Dog Racing has a ton of awesome Miata performance parts. So if you are interested in anything, there will be a link in the description below for these two things and just to the website in general. You might be asking yourself, what do those two things do? Let's start off with the oil catch can. Since this motor did not come turbocharged from the factory and it's making more than twice the power it does when it's stock, it also creates a lot more oil vapor. When you're just cruising or driving it around town, that's not a big deal. But when you're at the track beating on your car all day at the higher RPMs, high boost, it creates a lot of oil vapor. And said oil vapor is put into bad places. It comes out of two ports, one right here and one right there. We don't have to worry about this port too much because we have a PCV valve here. This valve closes at high RPMs and prevents any sort of vapor from getting into the intake manifold and into your intake system. Now over here we just have a simple little tube. There's, there's nothing there preventing anything. So what happens is oil vapor comes out of the valve cover and it goes down into your turbo, goes down into your intercooler, into your intake manifold, then it just builds up in places that you don't want it to build up in. It's not a huge issue, your car will still run perfectly fine without it. However, oil buildup in the intercooler or the intake manifold is going to decrease your efficiency and thus decrease your ponies. And that is where this guy comes in. Instead of this line going straight from the valve cover into the intake tube, we're going to route it through this first. When the oil vapors go through here, they get caught in it, hence the name catch can and then they don't go anywhere. They just stay in this thing instead of going into the turbo, down into your intercooler, and fucking everything up. The Rally Miata actually does have one, but the funny thing is it doesn't really need it. Uh, this thing, it does it does need it. I'm not gonna pretend like I knew all that off the top of my head. I do have a cheat sheet right here, but um, I'm just trying to explain to you guys how it works. Because that's the great thing about working on your car. You learn new things and... Yeah, sure, I don't know. Um, we are going to have to custom make a bracket that bolts into here. I think I'm going to use that hole right there. So this will be sitting here and looking all fresh. Now this is a radiator cooling panel. This is the simplest thing you could do to your car. It goes right here. It makes sure air goes through your radiator instead of up and around the radiator, thus increasing cooling and it just looks so much nicer. I mean, that's not even installed and it already looks so much better. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and install this catch can. Oh yeah. That's convenient. I'm gonna be using this stock hole right there, so something like so, and then I can just bend it right there at a 90 degree angle. Boom. That fits perfectly right there, and then this will bolt up like so. All right, so those are two holes. Is it an 11? You see, it's 11. Why? Why 11 mil? Alright. Yeah, that is, that's not gonna work. That's just, that's way too flimsy. So this little tube that goes into the intake connects on one side. It works better when it's on the right side. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the bolt now. That's pretty dang sturdy. 
<laughs> so glad I used the real metal. Now we have to connect the port on the valve cover to the other thing. So go ahead and connect one side to this. Great. Now on one end of this hose, we are gonna put this little restrictor in. I'll be honest, I don't exactly know what that's for, but um, I'm guessing it's to restrict things. <laughs> There we are. Hose clamp, that goes on. Both thing goes over sockets. Push down as hard as you can. Tighten. I went ahead and added a hose clamp on that hose because it was a little loose and um, yeah, so that's installed. Now the next order of business is to install this radiator cooling panel. And this is incredibly easy. The first thing we have to do is remove two 10 millimeter bolts. The ones right in front of these black little knobs right there and right there. There's one and there's two. Normally you would have to relocate your airbag sensor, but um, well, I entirely got rid of mine. So uh, yeah, the only thing I'm gonna do is just grind down this little plastic tab thing that's not supposed to be, I don't know what that's for, but get rid of it. I'm gonna give this a quick clean with some simple green. Next, we put this strip of foam padding on here. The next thing you want to do is put a little spacer right where we removed that 10 millimeter bolt. So, a little spacer right there. And put one on the other side too. Now we can go ahead and strip that, so it's sticky now. And this is gonna be the hard part because we have to make sure we don't move the spacer while also getting this in on here. And there we go. Then I'm gonna go ahead and try to get that bolt in. Now I'm just gonna push down, try to get that foam padding to stick to the thing and tighten the two bolts. And there we are. <laughs> Such a simple install, so cheap, and it just looks so much better and it'll help cooling. A decent amount too, because this is nice and sealed now with that, that foam padding and everything. It just oh, it looks so much cleaner. Ah, I, I love that so much. One of the ugliest things about this engine bay is that black charcoal canister, and it's completely unnecessary. Let's get rid of it, please. We start off by removing this vacuum line, which is not gonna wanna come off very easily. There we go, and go ahead and tee this baby off. Just like so, remove that. Remove that as well. And then there's one more vacuum hose you need to take off at the bottom. And once you get that off, it should slide right up. And there you go, ugly big thing that's pointless is out of the way. There are still like a lot of wires everywhere which bugs me but a little cleaner now. Now this might seem kind of ridiculous, but I'm going to take out the coolant reservoir and paint it. There are three bolts holding it in. I'll take it out, clean it, paint it, put it back in. Yeah, this thing is dry as a, as, I don't know what it would be dry, but nothing's in here. So the coolant overflow tank is done being painted as you can see, it didn't turn out the greatest. I did the lettering silver, which looks really cool. I like the two stripes, but um, well, I really struggle to get wrinkle paint to actually wrinkle. And I think my issue is that it's just, it's just too cold. I was talking to one of my friends who uses this stuff quite a lot and he says he does it in the sun because then the sun kind of bakes it on and helps it wrinkle. Like this part has started to wrinkle, but that part hasn't and it's just, it's not very consistent. Yeah, there you go, you can see that. Um, 
Ugh, and it bugs me because I love that textured wrinkle look and it, it looks so good. I just, I can't replicate the results. If you guys have any other tips besides doing it in the sun, please let me know. I'd really appreciate the help. That's past the fall. Ah, there we go. It's not as nice looking as I'd hoped because I couldn't paint it, but it's still so much better than a dirty plastic POS. I think it's time to take her out and see how everything is working. I very much missed. It's, I think a little funny though. It's toasty. So I was driving the Miata and I noticed the AFRs were looking a little different. In full boost it was about 12.4 uh, instead of 11.8, which isn't a lot, but it's, it's a difference. And I was thinking to myself, like, we didn't do anything. I mean, all we did is put a plate of metal on, add a catch can, paint something, and get rid of the big tube. But then a thought occurred to me. We put the catch can in between the intake and the valve cover. Before we put it on there, no air could come into that tube because it was all sealed off. But now, there's a breather valve. So air was coming through into the breather valve, into the turbo, thus making it leaner. That is my guess. I don't know if it's right at all. To test it, I put some duct tape on the breather valve, and then I'm gonna put this back on there just to make it look nice again. Now it's just like it was before. There's no air coming in anywhere along this tube, so I'm guessing that's it. Well, let's go drive it and see if it fixed it. So guys, that is going to be it for today. Installed a track dog racing catch can, a track dog racing cooling panel, painted the uh, coolant reservoir overflow, and also got rid of the charcoal canister and just cleaned up the engine bay a little bit. Not crazy big stuff, but the catch can is definitely important in keeping the car running great. I'm so pumped guys, autocross and track day season is coming soon. I think the first event is in April, so we've got about a month to get the car all dialed in. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please make sure to like it, and if you are new, please consider subscribing. And I will catch you guys in the next video. The Rally Miata gets the rest of the wheels tomorrow, so heck yes. Oh, 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 oh,